Give to us now your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the life in eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to bear it, so that nothing in life or in death is ever able to separate us from your great love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We have come to this place today to, to remember the Kathy that we hold in our hearts. She spent a lot of time, six and a half years, battling a disease. But the disease doesn't define her. There was much more to Kathy than that. And so gathering in this place, we will bring to mind the Kathy that was full of life and joy and health and remember her in those beautiful ways. 
Let me share now this scripture from Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to thee, O Lord, O Lord, hear my cry. Let thy ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If thou, Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in God's word do I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with God is great mercy. With God is conscious redemption. And God will redeem the people from all their sins. And then I share with you these words from the Christian scriptures, the book of Romans. So now there isn't any condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. All who are led by God's spirit are God's sons and daughters. You didn't receive the spirit of slavery to lead you back again into fear, but you receive the spirit that shows you are adopted as God's children. With this spirit we cry, Abba, Father. The same spirit agrees with our spirit that we are God's children. But if we are children, we are also heirs. We are God's heirs and fellow heirs with Christ. If we really suffer with him, so that we can also be glorified with him. I believe that the present suffering is nothing compared to the coming glory that is going to be revealed to us. The whole creation waits breathless with anticipation for the revelation of God's sons and daughters. In the same way, the Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. We don't know what we should pray, but the Spirit itself pleads our case with unexpected and unexpressed groans. The one who searches hearts knows how the Spirit thinks, because it pleads for the saints, consistent with the will of God. And so, what are we going to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? God didn't spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Won't this same God also freely give all things to us? Who will bring a charge against God's elect people? It is God who, who acquits them. Who is going to convict them? It is Jesus Christ who died, even more who was raised, and who is at God's right side. It is Jesus Christ who also pleads our case for us. And so who will separate us from Christ's love? Will we be separated by trouble or distress or harassment or famine or nakedness or danger or sword or disease? As it is written, we are being put to death all day long for your sake. But in these things, we win a sweeping victory through the one who loved us. Because I am convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not death or life, not angels or rulers, not present things or future things, not powers or height or death or any other thing that is created. This is the word of life for this day. Thank you. 
I believe if Kathy were here physically in the room today, she would ask the question, how are you spending your match? Initially, what connected Kathy and I was sports. But then that continued when I became a youth pastor, also not far from here at Bethel Baptist Church. And I would go and watch students that were a part of the youth group, uh, and uh, they would be playing ball. Kathy and Wayne were coaching many of those. The second, what connected us was our faith. Kathy knew that I was a youth pastor, and we had some discussions about faith. Kathy's theme over her six plus year journey, the answer is don't stop believing. I'm confident what kept Kathy going during this journey for three things. First of all, the support of the family. Secondly, the support of friends. Third, last but not least, support of her faith. Don't stop believing. She believed that the God that God would either heal her here on earth or in heaven. He chose to heal her in heaven. Kathy, thank you for the friendship you showed not only to me, but to so many young others. In fact, my watch has told me your heart rate rose about one point. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to slow. You know, I thought many, many times. So, what I could say. Many, many times. What I was going to say. <clears throat> Let me just start out with some few of our hundreds of, of hilarious stories. I'll share a couple of them. We spent many, many years in Milwaukee. <coughs> <decade. coughs> that our love played. So many weekends are all about life. Thank you, Dan, very much for some of this place and many memories. <laughs> one of the one of the times I remember is uh, we were all partying. The bathroom door came open at the bottom of the lake. Kathy was inside. I kind of leave it at that what she was wearing. I have a Polaroid camera, the old old Polaroid camera that shoots out the old shoes. <clears throat> I snapped a shot. Kathy looked at me and said, I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> that was one of her favorite things. So months and months after that, we all played softball for many years. We had a softball party, a secret Santa party, a white elephant party, where you all bring gifts, gag gifts, put them under the tree, and everybody draws a number. Well, I took that picture and blew it up to an 8 by 10 <laughs> wrapped it up, put it under the tree. Kathy couldn't figure out what all the promotion was, but all everybody was making on these pictures she never saw. As soon as she saw what the picture was, the 8 by 10 of the lake, again, Kathy looked at me and said, I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> another another uh, memory of the part of the lake. One night, me, Dwayne, Kathy, Jackie, and our four kids were all out fishing. It had to be one o'clock in the morning. Kathy and Jackie were up in front of the boat, had their poles in the water. They were jacked. They, could, they no longer knew what they were doing anymore. Me and Dwayne were in the back of the boat. I put on my life preserver. I snuck out the back of the boat. Go all along the side of the boat. I grabbed Kathy's fishing line as hard as I could. Oh, oh, Jackie, I got a fish. Oh, Jackie, I got a fish. 
I grab the rose and go, <laughs> 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 you should have said, yeah, you guys. And I'm not wanting to get very little future eyes. <laughs> You should have seen it like every campground will have to start off and they hear what the hell is going on. <laughs> you know, I could go on for hours about memories, my memory with Kathy, but I'll spare y'all. I could spend days and hours and tell you a lot of stories. You know what? <clears throat> Life isn't easy. Life is hard. And as we've we witnessed with Kathy's passing, life is not fair. It never was, it isn't now. It will never be. You know, most people concentrate and aspire to be something. Be something individual, take individual happiness. Aspire to be president, aspire to be a sports hero, aspire to be a doctor, lawyer, astronaut, etc. Get them with a very, very intelligent person. Kathy could have chosen to go to college, get a degree, aspire to be anything she wanted to be. She would have been very successful at any profession and anything she would have chosen to be. But she didn't care about herself. <clears throat> what Kathy aspired to be, well, she aspired to make a difference in people's lives. <coughs> That's what she loved. Be it with her family, her kids she coached, or any appointment she happened to come across. Anybody that needed help, a shoulder to cry on, anyone that needed shoes, clothes, money, a meal, a home, hers was all they wanted to come by. She aspired to be there and make a difference. That was Kathy's profession. Taking care and making a difference in people's lives. But Kathy's main specialty was making a difference in young people's lives. My wife and I attended the new basketball games at Kathy Coates. I call it Vanderbilt Middle School because you go to early middle school and plastic all over the walls. Kathy Gordon, how much they inspire kids and all the matters. So, anyway, we, we attended games at early middle school and you couldn't miss the banners, awards, and the gym with plaques for Kathy and Dwayne's names attached. I used to kid Dwayne and Kathy, this should be Vanderbilt Gym. To watch Kathy out there interacting with the kids was something special. Everybody played. Everybody was able. She made the kids feel needed. I don't even think half the time she knows who won or lost. It didn't matter. Her only concern was the kids enjoyed themselves, they learned something, and Kathy made sure they were always safe, and the kids all knew she was there when they needed her, and that didn't include just the game. We'd often go to Northern High basketball games. You'd always find Kathy going at the south end of the gym. It would just amaze me that all the young kids that came to basketball games were together in the cabin. They could have been over with the friends, they could have been somewhere else in the gym, but they congregated over with the captain alone. Many of them called her mom, many of them just sit in their entire game just like it was their family. It would thrill, it would thrill Kathy to death when it was one of her players just played on a high school basketball team. Years ago, I was a manager of an athletic store here in Norman. Kathy would constantly come in, go to the sales rack, purchase shoes, socks, shorts, and anything that could benefit the kids that she came in contact with. You know, if you think about it, Kathy's battle of cancer was just like a contest in the game she loved, basketball. Kathy versus cancer. For, for six years, day after day, month after month, and year after year, about the time cancer would seem like it was getting the upper hand, it was like cancer was up by three. With time winding down, Kathy would step up, knock down the three, tie the game, send her life in another overtime, another chance to win, and more time to make a difference in someone else's life. This last year or so, to take some stress off the family, let them get back to their daily routine. My wife Jackie spent more time with Kathy, taking her to the doctor appointments, chemotherapy, 
This was getting to be very exhausting, okay? And you can really tell the game getting the show. And she expressed more than once the pain was more than she could fight. The doctor's finally took Kathy. Let's focus more on quality of life. Shortly after the doctor visits and chemo was taken away, Kathy was to rest and make me comfortable at home. Jackie took her turn, spent more time, more and more time with Kathy, making sure she was comfortable, she was clean and cared for while everybody else was at work. One day I come over with Jackie. Jackie was about 10 seconds behind me getting out of the car. I came in first. I walked in and looked at Kathy and said, Jackie fit make it. I'm here to give you a bath. <laughs> Kathy looked at me and the raspy voice and took a picture of us. <laughs> Kathy didn't lose her bath, battle with cancer. You know, this time the clock ran down, Kathy's life again, and Kathy was down by three again. Kathy took the ball. Kathy took the ball, stepped up so many times like she did before. Put that shot to here. The difference this time is we didn't see the outcome. Because somewhere at a bigger gym than ATM, they needed a coach, a team that needed a special person that could make a difference in everybody's lives. Blaine, Michael, Amy. I bless you're going to mourn and miss Kathy more than we can ever imagine. But let me leave you with this. We can all be impressed by someone who does something big for ourselves. But we, have, we can only be inspired by someone who does something for others. Kathy left this world in a better place she found it. Kathy made a difference. Kathy, we're going to miss you out When Kathy and I talked and planned her service, one of the things she told me she wanted was the 23rd Psalm. It's printed inside your memorial flyer. And so I invite all of us here to read this together. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He lets me rest in grassy, grassy meadows. He leads me to restful waters. He keeps me alive. He guides me in proper paths for the sake of his good name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they protect me. You set a table for me right in front of my enemies. You bathe my head in oil. My cup is so full it spills over. Yes, goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the Lord's house as long as I live. On November the 4th, 1960, Royce and Dolores Ellison of Craig, Oklahoma, welcomed a daughter their third child and their only girl. They named her Kathy. Kathy grew up in Craig and in Norman. In first grade, she got an ear infection after swimming in Lake Thunderbird, which infected her mastoid bone and left her deaf in one ear. Years later, she would use that with the girls she coached that they should listen to her better because she was deaf in one ear and she laughed when she told me that. Kathy grew up playing sports, which led her to many good things in her life. In high school, she met Dwayne Vandenberg. 1975 on OU Texas weekend, their friend Joe introduced them by inviting her over and his parents were out of town for the football game. Kathy just laughed and laughed when she told me about that. Kathy was
was older than Dwayne. She was driving while he was still too young. And on their dates, she would drive and her mom paid for everything. Yeah, she laughed about that one too. Dwayne was the only guy she ever dated. But they didn't marry until nine years later when she was 24. November the 24th, 1984, they were married here at St. Stephen's in our old sanctuary. This was her church that she loved dearly. Kathy worked several jobs for Mitchell's Jewelry, Cleveland County Abstract, and West Star, but what she really loved was coaching. She coached girls basketball at Alcott, Whittier, and Central before settling in at Irving. For 20 years. Kathy's son Michael wrote this about her. Kathy was an avid sports fan. She loved all things related to OU. Kathy and Dwayne went to countless women's basketball games. The Boyd Noble Center was like a second home to them. They had their wedding in November. It was on a Saturday, which happened to fall on the same day as a home football game, and they never lived up and down. She's been to over 15 Major League Baseball stadiums as she traveled on countless road trips with Dwayne, Michael, and Amy. Skiing at the lake was among her favorite things to do with friends, and she was also a phenomenal foosball player. Kathy was a coach. Kathy and Dwayne both wished to share their love of sports with others. They coached basketball together for over 20 years, touching the lives of hundreds of student athletes. They spent the majority of time at Irving where both of their children went to middle school. When Kathy wasn't coaching, she was in charge of the booster club to help raise money for the athletic program. Many will remember her in the concession stand while Dwayne coached soccer. Kathy was a wife. Wherever Kathy was, there was also Dwayne for 44 years. They first met when she was 16. Their love of sports and eventually their love of coaching brought them closer than close together. And they were married nine years later, married for 36 years. They coached together. They went on ski trips, leg trips, softball trips, and many other kinds of trips. Kathy was a mother. I think if you asked her what her biggest passion was in life, she would say being a mother. Kathy was very, very close to her parents. And she was brokenhearted as they each passed. Her mom in 1999 and her dad in 2017. Kathy Vanderberg loved life. She told me numerous times that she felt she had a very good life, that she had wonderful kids, parents, a husband, and in-laws. About six and a half years ago, she got cancer. She fought it and she fought it. In that fight, she found many good friends and people who were faithful to her. The people at Mercy Hospital and at MD Anderson, the Angel Flight pilots and the gracious ground crews, the Kathy's Little Angels group, many people who brought her things that she needed, and her family. Most of all, Amy, who traveled with her multiple times and spent many hours caring for her mother. On October the 19th, 2020, Kathy passed from the pain of this life into the beauty of the next. She was preceded by her parents and her mother-in-law, survived, survived by her husband, Dwayne, son, Michael, daughter, Amy Hill, and her spouse, Logan, by her brothers and their spouses, Curtis and Glenda, Johnny and Dawn, her brother-in-law, father-in-law, nieces and nephews, numerous aunts and uncles and cousins, and former students and friends by the hundreds and hundreds who care deeply about Kathy. At 
this time, we're going to give you a chance if you would like to share a story about Kathy. And Bruce is going to begin with some that were written down that he's going to read and share. Amy asked me to read these on her behalf. These are some of that were on the uh, Tribute Memorial Care website. Connie Lockenberg, where to start? So many amazing, fun memories of her death. The one that touches my heart the most is how Kathy and Dwayne would take my son Garrett, Ian and Mel Chico's, in the Northern High Basketball game, always as their guest and their treat. Knowing that he had learning disabilities and needed supervision, they never hesitated because of their loving compassion for people. To see his smile and excitement every time he went with him touched my heart in ways that words cannot express. Kathy was truly an angel. Todd DeArmond said, Kathy and her mother worked for our family business for years. And I love Kathy. Always smiling face and a wonderful personality. She was so fun to work with, and her mother, Dolores, too. So glad that God gave us two amazing people, Kathy and Dolores. Kathy used to help me with my algebra because she was great at math. My family loves Kathy and Dolores as they were part of our family. Dwayne, such a great husband for Kathy and her wonderful children. We will miss you, Kathy. Be with God in heaven. Friends forever, Todd the Army. Terry Mitchell said that Kathy took this picture of the softball tournament in 1993-94. It actually was not of Kathy, but it was of, of Jim Mitchell, Jimmy Mitchell. We all played a lot of softball back then. Amy spent a lot of time in mud puddles, but this uh, was still super adorable. Kathy gave us a picture of Laura's friend at our wedding show. I love this picture of Jimmy Mitchell. I love how much laughter and memories it evokes when we look at it with our softball fans. Recreational softball in the 80s, 90s, and a little bit into the 2000s has given us many great long times. Tons of great stories and memories, memories, memories. Our connections continue with Norman Corner Jewelry, Avondale Drive, and Norman High School. Although we didn't get to see Kathy much in recent years. So thankful for Facebook and being able to keep her in our thoughts and prayers as she preserved it. Much love to Dwayne, Michael, and Amy, and Jim, and Terry Mitchell. Glenda Ruff said, so many wonderful memories of you, Kathy, working together that we had some fun. Times at CCA, only a few it was back then. Thank you for sharing your precious mother with us and now <clears throat> so we're having a family gathering. Given Giving her hugs and give her hugs from me. I will always cherish those times together, sending prayers for the room, like I told the voice the last time I saw her. It's see you later. She smiled because she knew it's the last time you were around. It's great memories of you and the way and your kids. Sonia Vandenberg, to know Kathy is to love her. We all know she was an exceptional mother, wife, daughter, sister, and friend, and coach. She also Wicked, smart, hardworking, and great landman, and was never at a loss for words. If Kathy was around, he just knew that things were going to be fun. Her sense of humor and silly ways always brightened up any room that she was in. Met Kathy when I was 18. Her status in the Vandenberg family was already cemented as I was just a girl. Randy was dating. To me, she came off as a bit aloof, strikingly pretty. All being very stylish. After she figured out I was going to stick around, and <clears throat> I learned she was deaf in one ear. I wonder if she won some of my questions or comments. <laughs> it was not long until we became very, very good friends. Over the years, we just spent many birthdays and holidays together. Like most families, but our family really enjoyed each other's company. We always planned to get together for no reason other than just hang out on football Saturdays, late trips, and lots of phone calls in between. I think I'm very fortunate to have her in my life. We are different in so many ways, including our personalities and hobbies. Although we both love scary movies. She was a jock, I was the complete opposite, but somehow we just understood each other. She always made me feel like I was 
super important and top priority is being there for me if I needed her. I really hope I made her feel the same. One of the last texts to me was her telling me simply, son, I love you. I will carry that love with me for the rest of my time here. I'm so thankful to have enjoyed her beautiful spirit while she was here on earth. Rest in peace, sister. Love, son. Then Chelsea Green. One of my favorite memories with Mrs. Kathy was when I was in eighth grade with her daughter, Amy. We were all city champs that year. With Miss Kathy leading the way as our coach. Recently, Amy said to me, she was the best coach ever. She loved all the girls she coached like they were her own daughters. And it was true. I was new to Irving that year, and the entire Vanderbilt family, well, my family, made us feel loved. And I won't forget that year of all the memories we made in Chelsea. Are there others who would like to share something? We would invite you to come up here so that those who are joining us virtually can see all. Right. You can be right there. Sure. Um, Kathy came to work for me. Um, she was younger, and, and her and Wayne just got married, and uh, Ed Mitchell's jewelry was down there. And uh, I remember negotiating the deal. I said, Kathy, you can come to work for me, but your husband's got to come play softball for me. Because he was a shortstop. But anyway, but she had some negotiations of her own. Later on, her, she was pregnant with Amy, and she said, I'll stay to work for you, but we got to do the nursery in the back. So we had a nursery in the back in my, in my office. <laughs> and that's probably why I didn't do doctors with my daughters. <laughs> but it was uh, quite a deal. And she uh, she never worked weekends because she, either she was coaching or delayed or doing something. So a remarkable lady. Uh, She'll be missed. Uh, she was she was a lot of fun to work with and be a friend and, and we'll miss her dearly Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank There are hundreds of other stories to share about Kathy. And in the coming days and coming weeks, you will share them with one another. And I hope that you will reach out to the family and share your stories with them as well. Ways to warm their hearts and to show your care and compassion for one another and for the family in your group. In a moment, I will ask you to join me in prayer. And following that, we are going to do a version of the Lord's Prayer that we do in this church. And when I talked to Kathy about what she wanted at her funeral service, this was the number one thing. Absolutely. The Lord's Prayer, the way we sing it at St. Stephen's. And the way it will be done is is I will sing the leader line, uh, Aubrey and I will sing one line, and then you repeat back the same line with the same tune. And so it's back and forth that way. Let us now pray. Gracious and loving God, reaching out to us on bright days and on dark days, when the sun is out in our lives and when our lives are walking through very times. We thank you and we praise you that you are now surrounding Kathy Hanover with your gracious presence and your loving arms. Let those of us walking in this place on this day and those who are in other places and remembering her, may we find comfort 
in the many beautiful memories that we have and that we share, and the way that her spirit lives on inside each one. And now as the community gathered around in faith, we join our voices in the prayer that is the ancient prayer of the church as we sing. Our In a moment, you will be invited to go to the cemetery uh, for the committal service at the grave. Because of the weather conditions, things will be somewhat different. Uh, we won't be asking you to follow in line, but make your way there safely on your own and meet with the group at the cemetery, which is the IOOF on uh, North Porter north of Robinson and south of Rock Creek Road. And um, so we'll gather it there, and I believe others who are not present here may be gathered here as well. And now I invite you to stand for the blessing.
And now by the peace of God, go with you, keep you strong. May the blessings of having been a part of Kathy's life and having her been a part of your life be an ongoing blessing to you this day and every day. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.